The opinion of many analysts is that they are meh. Yes, they say they might have a role, they have some interesting features, but they do not change the overall reality. And at the end of the day, they are not really necessary. If this is true, why everyone, literally everyone who can, is working on them? So this is the third video in a series of three that covers international hypersonic projects. We have already covered Iran, Germany, Brazil, North Korea, South Korea and Japan. Now we're going to cover two of the countries most committed to hypersonic technology, starting with France. Sir, we have an obligation with the internet standards. Yeah, I know, I know. Not to show it. France has a very clear cut and admirably clear policy about nuclear weapons. They have a strategic deterrent aimed at retaliatory strike if France is hit by an existential threat. But they also deploy tactical nuclear weapons that they call pre-strategic to demonstrate the resolve of using strategic nuclear weapons if necessary. Sir, are you in agreement with that famous analyst from the Southern Hemisphere? Mm, I would rather say that he agrees with me when he takes the time to think the things through. I mean, artist, let's not be ungenerous. He is young, he has potential. In December 2019, the French Minister of Defense announced the development of a technology demonstrator for a hypersonic glider called the VMAX. This is the first step to developing ballistic missiles for the delivery of strategic nuclear weapons armed with hypersonic gliders. And for all those who say that hypersonic weapons don't make a difference, well, I believe this is a resounding signal. However, the demonstrator first flight was expected in 2021, but the project, which is today in the hands of Ariane Space, seems to be late. We will keep a close eye on it, even though it's quite secretive, because when the French do something like this, it is generally worth of attention. But the French commitment toward hypersonic weapons is even more interesting than that. So the current weapon for the delivery of pre-strategic nuclear warheads is the ASMP missile. It is a supersonic missile with a range of about 500 kilometers for the improved A version, but it is quite old. The design goes back to the mid 80s and it's time to think to a replacement. The French had two design options basically either go for stealth or for hypervelocity. After doing a few theoretical studies, they unequivocally have chosen hypervelocity. The ASN-4G will be the classic hypersonic cruise missile built from the ground up with French technology, which is always a wise option. Actually, studies on the scramjet propulsion started in France since the mid 90s at the Onera, which is their equivalent of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Prototypes and demonstrators have been built and the weapon will be grounded on that knowledge that is already existing. It is obviously expected to be maneuverable and it will have a top speed of about 5000 km per hour and range requirement is of about 1200 km. The weapon is expected to enter service around 2035 and completely replace the ASMP by 2050 and the French are hoping to keep it current for most of the 21st century. So yes, I'm violating my rule of not speaking about India or Pakistan. It is an exception, so don't get used to it. Please be civilized in the comments. The Shahuria is a nuclear-capable land-based intermediate-range quasi-ballistic missile launched by a transporter erector launcher, which is a mouthful. While apparently not different from any other weapon of its category, it is capable of a relatively low hypersonic trajectory. The first stage carries the missile in the high atmosphere between uh, 30,000 and 50,000 meters, where the second stage propels it up to Mach 7.5 in a horizontal or nearly horizontal trajectory. The missile second stage and the warhead can maneuver during the whole flight. So it's not strictly a ballistic missile, it's not strictly a hypersonic cruise missile because the propulsion is not a scramjet but a conventional rocket engine, so I believe that saying semi-ballistic is probably the correct definition. 
The missile was approved to enter service in 2020, so it should already be in service, albeit probably in limited quantities. The HSTDV is an experimental hypersonic vehicle that flew for the first time in 2020. It is powered by an experimental scramjet and its purpose is to develop a usable scramjet engine, which is not a small feat if you never did before. Moreover, it will be the foundation of the development of space launch vehicles and entirely indigenous hypersonic cruise missiles. The HGV-202F is a hypersonic gliding vehicle technology demonstrator conceptually equivalent to the Russian avant-garde. Like many Indian projects, the main purpose is to develop indigenous technology, which is always a wise thing. The project timeline is not known, but it is currently in development by HTMP Industries. And now, what everyone was waiting for. Three, two, one, now. That's one. So the BrahMos is the pride of the Indian Armed Forces. It is considered the fastest cruise missile in the world and it is in service today with all three armed services of India. It is only logic that its successor, the BrahMos 2, was going to be a hypersonic cruise missile. Plans for a BrahMos successor started to emerge around 2011, when an agreement between the Indian DRDO and the Russian firm NPO was signed to develop an indigenous hypersonic cruise missile. At that time, the Russian hypersonic technology was not developed as it is today, the Zircon was still in a development stage. So the BrahMos 2 development started from scratch and understandably dragged on a little bit. The first flight was expected in 2020, but it has been pushed back many times. Now that the Zircon is entering service with the Russian Navy, several Indian sources declared that a technology transfer is going to happen from Russia to India. It is not clear what is going to be exchanged in return, but considering that Russia is planning to adopt the BrahMos 2 as well, it is not impossible that a proper technology exchange, unlike what happened for example for the Sohoi 27, is going to happen. And this is even more likely in the recent international environment. However, the development seems to be now in full swing and the DRDO expects a first flight in five to six years from now, so 2028-2029. As usual, we need to wait and see. But if you don't want to wait, there are the other two episodes of this series and there are plenty of videos on hypersonic technology on this channel. And they are appearing beside me. If you want to support the channel, clicking on this is a good way. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.